Hello everyone. In this lecture, let's build a digital clock using our microcontroller PIC16 of 877A. So for this, we are just going to interface DS1307 real-time clock calendar IC to our microcontroller PIC16 of 877A. Let's get started. So this IC that is DS1307 is using I2C bus. So we just want to configure the I2C bus of our microcontroller for communicating with that. So in this lecture, let's see some of the programming sequence for establishing I2C communication in our microcontroller. So the steps involved in interfacing this DS1307 with our microcontroller is initially there are separate registers that is allocated in the DS1307. One is for seconds, minutes, hours, days, month and year. So in the first step, we will be writing the corresponding registers of DS1307. That is the, we will be writing, in the first step, we will be writing the values for the registers that is allocated in the DS1307. That is, we will be writing the second value, minute value, hour value, day value, month value and year value. Once the data is successfully written to the allocated registers in DS1307, our only job is to read the values from the same registers that we have written to the DS1307. That we will be doing in a routine process in our program. So that is the second step. Read from the registers of DS1307. Once the data is read, we will be printing that values to the LCD connected to the PIC microcontroller. So the programming sequence or lines that we are going to see in this lecture is, we are just going to see how we can write to the I2C bus and how we can read from the I2C bus and the programming sequence for start bit, stop bit, restart bit, acknowledgement bit and not acknowledgement bit are the sequences that we are going to see. So this program sequence are specially meant for establishing I2C communication in our PIC microcontroller. So this is not specifically meant for DS1307. This is meant for devices that is using I2C communications. So you can use this programming lines for interfacing any devices that is using I2C communication, not only DS1307. For the first sequences, start bit. So using these three lines, you can establish a start bit from our PIC16 of 877A. That is, firstly, we will be setting the SCN bit, that is the start enable bit from the SSP CON2 register. You can see, you can see this is the SCN that is available in the SSP CON2 register. This is the data sheet of the microcontroller. You can find this data sheet in the download section of this video link is provided and this is the start condition enable bit if this is initiated this will initiate the if this is set this will initiate the start condition of the i2c bus and you can see this line it is automatically cleared by the hardware so that is why you can see we are waiting for this bit to be cleared by the hardware so this while loop will hold the control until the SCN bit is slow. Once it is slow, that means the start bit is established. So we are moving to the next line and we are clearing the SSPIF flag from the PIR1 register. So about this flag, you can see that is available in the PIR1 register. So this is the synchronous serial port interrupt flag. So these are some of the conditions at which this flag will be raised you can see you can see this flag will be raised when the start condition was completed by the ssp module and it will be raised when the stop condition is completed and also when the restart condition is completed and acknowledgement condition is also completed this flag this flag will be raised so we are clearing that flag so using these three programming lines you can establish or implement start bit from our microcontroller to the I2C bus. So for establishing stop bit, we will be using 
the similar procedure except one thing that is we are setting the PEN bit from the SSP CON2 register. As the similar case for start bit, this PEN is meant for stop condition enable bit. So this will initiate the stop condition and it is automatically cleared by the hardware. So we are waiting for the PEN to go low. Once it is enabled, then we are clearing the SSP IF flag. So for establishing repeated start, the process is same. We are setting the RSEN bit from the SSP CON2 register. That is the re repeated start condition enable bit. We are setting this bit and this is also automatically cleared by hardware. So we will wait for this bit to go low once after we are setting this. And once it is gone low, we will clear the SSP IF flag from the PIR1 register. And we have seen the repeated start. Now we will go for the acknowledgement bit. For sending an acknowledgement bit, we will clear the ACKDT bit from SSP CON2 register and we will enable the ACKEN bit from the SSP CON2 register. You can see this is the acknowledgement data bit and this is the acknowledgement sequence enable bit. So for sending an acknowledgement we must enable this ACKEN and this is also automatically cleared by the hardware as you can see. So we will wait for this bit to go low once it is enabled. So once the acknowledgement is properly sent this bit will be automatically cleared. So we will be waiting for this bit once it is enabled using while loop and once this bit is set we will be deciding whether to send an acknowledgement or not acknowledgement using this ACKDT bit that is if you are setting this bit then not acknowledgement is sent and if you are clearing this bit acknowledgement is sent so for sending an acknowledgement bit we will clear this bit and we will wait for this ACKEN and you can clear the SSPIF flag also but no need to do that while you are sending acknowledgement for and for sending the not acknowledgement the process is same except that we will set the ACKDT bit from the SSP CON2 register as I said before. If it is 1 then not acknowledgement is sent except that the programming sequence lines are similar to acknowledgement bit as you can see this. And that's all about the initial programming sequences and we will go for the write data sequence. And now we will assume that we are writing a data of 0x04 to the I2C bus and this next line we will wait for the SSP IF flag to go high. That is once the data is successfully loaded to the I2C bus this flag will be raised automatically. So we are waiting for that and we are clearing that bit. And after that we are checking a condition that is we are checking the ACK yes. STAT that is the acknowledgement status bit from the SSP CON2 register. If it is high, we are stopping the process that is we are sending the stop bit. We will see what is that acknowledgement status bit. So this is the acknowledgement status bit. You can see whenever we send a data in an I2C bus or whenever a master sends a data in an I2C bus it will receive an acknowledgement by the slave. This we saw in the last I2C working lecture, right? So, if this bit is 1, that means acknowledgement was not received from the slave. And if this bit is 0, then the acknowledgement is received from the slave. So, we are checking for this bit in the SSP CON2 register. And if it is 1, that means the slave is not responded with the acknowledgement signal. So we are stopping the process. You can see these three are the programming sequence for stop bit. So that's it for write operation and for reading the data from the I2C bus we are just going to implement only three lines that is we are enabling the RCIN bit from the SSP CON2 register. This RCEN is nothing but the receive enable bit for the master. So we are enabling this bit and we are waiting for the BF bit from the SSP stat register to go high. If it is high that means the data buffer of the I2C bus is filled with data. So 
after that we are loading the data to the variable called value so ssp buff is the buffer register for holding the i2c data so we are loading the data that is present in the ssp buff to the variable called value so that's it about the programming sequence for implementing i2c bus in our microcontroller pic16 of 877a we will see in the next lecture